Hi everyone and welcome back to 5-Minute Family Search. So what I would like to do with you now is to show you how you can go through records that are not indexed yet. And what that means is these videos that we've been doing so far when we've been doing any kind of research on our family, we've been looking in Family Search, Family Tree, and we've been looking through records that have been photographed and indexed and put into the program. But there are millions of records that the indexers have still not had time yet to put into the program. And so I'm going to show you how you can access that information. So I'm going to go ahead and start here on this main page. And I'm going to come up here to search and I'm going to come down to records. And we've been on this page several times before. And I'm going to come over here to research by location. And I am going to go ahead and look for records in West Virginia. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this down till I see West Virginia. And there we go. I'm going to click on that. And that's going to bring me to this page here, the West Virginia Indexed Historical Records. Now, this is what I was just talking about. We've done this in a previous video, and I have shown you how to do this. But you'll see right here it says Indexed. And we want to scroll down and come past all of this until we see this right here, West Virginia image only historical records. So what this means, it says can't find records for your ancestors when you search, try our collections that haven't been indexed yet. Select a collection to start browsing the images. So here if you're looking there are birth, marriage and death, census and lists, several military records, probate and court, and then a miscellaneous record down here. And if you look they have 11 million just in this United States World War II draft registration cards, and I've actually indexed those. Those are kind of fun to do. But all of these, the images have been taken, but the indexers have not had time yet to get in and to put these records into Family Search. So let's just say here that I had a relative who was a doctor in West Virginia, and I could come in here and it says United States deceased physician file, and this is for 1864 to 1968. So if I click on that, it's going to take me to the actual image. It says United States deceased physician file. That's where we want to be. And I'm going to come down here to click, I'm sorry, to learn more. And that is going to bring me over here and it will talk about the actual file that you're going to look at. It tells you what is in the collection, how to browse it. It gives me sample pages that I can look through so I know exactly what I'm looking for. Um, there's examples one, two, and three. If you scroll down further, it says, what can this collection tell me? This information varies with each card. The facts usually that you will find, they'll include the name, the death date, and where they practiced, and may also have where they attended school, where they were living at the time of their death, the cause of death, and any professional affiliations. And if you go down here, how do I search the collection? And it'll give you directions on how to do that. What do I do next? I found who I was looking for. What now? So this is all information that we can go through if we're looking at a file and we're not quite sure what it is, and it'll help us to figure out what to do with it. So we're going to come back over here where we were, and to get to that page we just left, I had just clicked Learn More, and it took me over to that next page. But now I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say I want to browse. So when I do that, it brings up the actual names that are on the image, and if you look, you can see that there's a range. It says Surname Range. So I just like this name, Higginbotham. I thought that was a fun name, Higginbotham. So let's say my ancestor's name, and I found this previously in it when I was looking through this before I wanted to teach you. And I come down here, and Higginbotham will be between this range of William Higby and James Hinchcliffe. Hinchliff. Yeah, James Hinchliff. So I'm going to click here. And when I do that, it brings me up to that actual image. And I am just using my scroll bar to make it smaller. I can come over here on the left, I can make it larger, I can make it smaller, I can put all of the images out, or I can come down here and it will toggle the full screen and I can go back and forth. If I look up here, I'm on image one and there's 3,050 images. Now I have gone through here and looked through some of them, so I just clicked this button right here, the view single image, and it puts it all over my screen. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to take out number one, I'm going to put in 65, and I just know that's going to take me to the person that I'm looking for. But if not, I could have just gone through and looked through these alphabetically to see where my relative fell. So when I come in here, here is Maury Higginbotham. Botham, I just think that's a fun name. He graduated from Beaumont in 1891, and Beaumont is the name of his college. If I click over one more, I can see that he was also licensed by the Missouri State Board. 
if I come over another one, I can see the place and year of his birth was April 21, and it has the Beaumont School listed, Missouri, date of licensing was 1891, and the address stated. So some of these were a little more detailed than others. Some had a birth date and a death date. Others just had um, where they practiced and where they had received their schooling. Another one had where um, he passed away and what he passed away from. So each of them are a little bit different, but I think that was all for Maury. Oh, here's another one. Um, and then the, no, I apologize. This is for Richard Higginbotham. And so it would, you can look at the top. And so we're out of Maury. So if Maury was my ancestor, then I could just stop right there. And that would be all the information that I would need. But I can go in and look at these records. As I said, they are not indexed, but they do have images taken. And the information is sitting in family search, but it had, they have not had time to actually put it into the program itself. But again, if I uh, had a, an, a, an ancestor that lived in West Virginia, who was a physician, I could have come in here and I could have found some information on my relative and gone ahead and put that into family search. And that is how you can research records that are not indexed and image only in family search.